The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. At 45, sold American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Remember, year in, year out. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The finer, the lighter, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So for real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. From the Glenview Naval Air Station at Glenview, Illinois, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on next Wednesday, February 14th, Jack Benny celebrates his birthday. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, Jack Benny. So don't fence me in. <laughs> Sweet Georgia Brown. <laughs> that I put in extra. Continue, Don. Go ahead. I'm... As you all know, sometimes a baby is born with a silver spoon in its mouth. Sometimes a baby is born with a birthmark on its knee. That's right. But tonight, we bring you the only baby that was born with a toupee on its head. <laughs> and here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I wasn't born with a toupee. It just happened that I was such a cute baby, when the doctor left, he patted me on the head and his fur-lined glove came off. <laughs> for the next eight years, I wore the fingers down over my forehead for bangs. <laughs> my mother, my mother thought the thumb was a cow lick. <laughs> No kidding, huh? Well, Jack, when did you finally find out that that thing you were wearing on your head was a glove? Uh, the first time I went to get a haircut. The barber looked at my head and asked me if I wanted hair tonic or saddle soap. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Don, you're right about one thing. Next Wednesday is my birthday. Huh? Well, Jack, we've done a lot of kidding about your age, but seriously, uh, how old are you? You're right, Don. We have done a lot of kidding. <laughs> But when a man reaches a certain age, there's no use denying it. In fact, Don, there's a satisfaction in knowing you have reached that age in a distinguished and dignified manner. Well, it's no wonder so many people have such a deep admiration for you, Jack. It takes a man of high character to accept growing old so gracefully. Thank you. So tell me, Jack, how old are you? 36. <laughs> And now, fellas, since we're brought... Wait a to... minute, wait a minute, Jack. Nothing wrong, kid? All I can say is you certainly act a lot older than 36. What? Why, the minute it started snowing, you chased all over town trying to buy preheated underwear. <laughs> now, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. In the first place, there's no such thing as preheated underwear. You gotta hold it in front of the fireplace like everybody else <laughs> Preheated underwear. <laughs> Don, a young man of 30... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, you fellas. <laughs> Say, I called for you at the hotel, Mary, but you were gone. How'd you get here? Oh, I came over in one of those yellow perils. One of those... <laughs> 
Well, those yellow perils, what's that? Uh, Chicago taxi cab. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Oh, I was a little confused, Mary. You see, a yellow peril is also a training plane, and I knew you wouldn't be coming over in one of those. Well, this may surprise you, Jack, but while you were rehearsing yesterday, a handsome pilot took me up in one of those training planes. Really? Yeah. What training? <laughs> I think I know what you mean. This pilot was really nice, though. He had a medal for bravery, for sharpshooting, and for flying. Well. He also had a medal for good behavior, but I made him give that back. <laughs> oh. One of those guys, huh? He got you up in the airplane, then you had to kiss him. I didn't have to kiss him. He was gentleman enough to open the door and offer me a parachute. <laughs> Okay, Mary, but if you're giving away any kisses, just remember that Wednesday is my birthday. Say, that's right, Jack, February the 14th. And Mary, Jack says he's only 36 years old. Why, Jack Benny, do you expect... Well, that's a... all I am, and I can prove it. Oh, Jack. Well, look, my last birthday was in 1944, is that right? Yes, 1944. And I was born in... Yes? I was born in Waukegan. <laughs> and that makes me 36. Makes you 36. Yeah. Jack, how does being born in Waukegan make you 36? It's simple arithmetic. My last birthday was in 1944. I was born in Waukegan. Waukegan has eight letters, and eight from 44 is 36. <laughs> now, let's drop it. Oh, brother. What are you old brother about? I celebrated my last birthday in June. Mary, Mary. My mother was born in September. My father was born in Chicago. Now, Mary... Chicago I... from September leaves two, and two from June is four, so that makes you four months old. Mary. So throw me over your shoulder and burp me, Daddy. I'm a baby. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary, there are some things that people just don't... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I'm Dr. Fensel from St. Joe. St. Joe? What do you know? I'm going to be in St. Joe next week. I know, but two years ago when you were supposed to go there, you canceled your trip because you caught pneumonia. <laughs> Remember? That's right. That's right. I did. Well, this year, the people of St. Joe have sent me here to make sure that you stay well. Uh, do you mind if I open your shirt? My shirt? Not at all. What cheap material. <laughs> Look, doctor. Now, quiet. I'm going to tap your ribs with this mallet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> doctor. Uh, hold your head still, Mr. Benny. Hold your head still. I want to look into your ear. My ear? Well, okay, but make it snappy, will you? Very well. Uh, Mr. Benny, would you mind holding your hand over your other ear? The light's coming in. <laughs> Hey, are you sure that... That'll you're... be all. The examination is over. Goodbye. What a crazy doctor. Imagine him coming in and... Oh, hello, Larry. Hello, Mr. Benny. Happy birthday. <laughs> hey, kid, I'm going to throw a little birthday party Wednesday, and you're invited. Well, thanks, Mr. Benny. You know, my father celebrated his birthday yesterday. Really, Larry? How old is he? Well, he's 54, but he tells everybody he's 42. Oh, oh. How old are you, How old are you, Mr. Benny? Well... He's 23, but he tells everybody he's 36. <laughs> Mary, 23. Gee, Miss Livingston, now I'm sorry I'm 22. Why? Well, look what's going to happen to me in just one year. Don't worry about it, kid, and let's have Say, your... Say, Larry, I meant to ask you, how are you standing the cold weather out here in Chicago? Oh, I'm quite comfortable, Miss Livingston, thanks to Mr. Benny. Thanks to Mr. Benny? Yeah, he's letting me wear his... Larry. <laughs> well, they're a little too big for me around the seat, but they're warm. <laughs> Jack, what is he talking about? Nothing, nothing. Go ahead and sing, kid. It's the last time I ever lend my preheated underwear to anybody. I don't care. <laughs>
you belong to my heart now and forever and our love had its start not long ago we were gathering stars while a million guitars played our love song When I said I love you, every beat of my heart said it too. T'was a moment like this. Do you remember? And your eyes through a kiss when they met mine. Now we own all the stars. And a million guitars are still playing Darling, you are the one And you'll always belong to my heart Solamente una vez a mi en la vida Solamente una vez y no Guitars are still playing. Darling, you are the song, and you'll always be to my My heart sung by Larry Stevens Very good Larry And now ladies and gentlemen Oh say Mr. Benny Yes kid Did you see that article in Collier's magazine That Larry Adler wrote In Collier's? Yes it's all about you and your overseas trip All about me? Well I'm sorry I didn't see it And there's a big picture of you in it too Mr. Benny Uh a picture of me? (laughs) Say now that you mention it I think I did see it somewhere What do you mean somewhere? You've got in every wall in your hotel room papered with it I have not You have too You even got them pasted in the elevator shaft And when people ride up and down It'll look like moving pictures <laughs> Now Mary And how you ever got them into the powder room I'll never Mary, that's enough Anyway, Larry, thanks for... Listen, stop laughing. You get paid for this show. (laughs) Anyway, Larry, thanks for mentioning it. And don't forget my birthday party. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, fellas. Let's straighten up and fly around. (laughs) Phil, Phil, I'm glad you got here. I just invited Larry to my birthday party. I want you to come, too. Hey, that's right. Wednesday is your birthday. Yeah? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So bring out the bottle. I've got the corkscrew. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, Phil, that's pretty good. Yes, sir. Congratulations and many happy returns, Jackson. Thanks. And say, look, I ain't much on speech making, but I hope you uh, live to be as old as you look. <laughs> You like that, huh? You like that. Hey, Phil, what kind of a crack was that? Well, I was only kidding, Jackson. In fact, I got the boys in the orchestra to all chip in and buy you a present, and here it is. Present? Oh, gee, isn't that nice? A copy of what every young boy should know. (laughs) Deluxe edition. (laughs) Hey, Jackson. Huh? Jackson, uh, uh, turn to page 16. Uh... Page 16? Yeah, 16. Go ahead. Turn to it. Okay. Gosh. Hey, this, this book doesn't mince words, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. What does it say, Jack? Don't play with matches. <laughs> huh? 
What a book. Thanks, Bill. Say, Jackson, talking about your birthday, you were born somewhere around here, weren't you? Yes, sir, Waukegan. And I'm going to invite a lot of my friends and relatives from there to my party. My sister Florence, my cousin Cliff Gordon, Ollie Imerman, Bidey Talcott, Frank Wallin, the mayor. Then I'm going to invite Jerome Morrison, Julius Sinekin, and... No, I'm not going to invite Julius. When we went to school, he used to pull my curls. So... <laughs> well, he couldn't do it now with a pair of tweezers. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you'd be surprised, sister, what's under that glove. <laughs> anyway, all my old friends are going to be at the party. Oh, say, Jack. Yes, Don? As long as Phil gave you your birthday present, I might as well give you mine, too. Oh, have you got a present for me, Don? Yes, Jack, here it is. All framed and everything. Let's see it. Well, Don, nobody else in the world would have ever thought of a present as sweet as this. What is it, Jack? It's a picture of Whistler's mother smoking a lucky strike. <laughs> Don, this is one of the nicest gifts that I've... There's the phone. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Oh, Rochester, where are you? I'm in St. Joe, boss. Oh, long distance. Hey, I'm glad you got in okay. Oh, not exactly okay. I had a little financial trouble on the train. Well, you shouldn't have. I gave you the money for the trip. I know, boss, but you figure things a little too close. <laughs> what do you mean? At the station, I bought a package of gum and weighed myself. Uh-huh. And when I went to buy my ticket, I was exactly six cents short. <laughs> well, it's your own fault for spending money like that. What did you do then? Well, I got on the train anyway, and if it hadn't been for the extreme kindness of some sailors, I wouldn't have had enough money for my fare. Why, did they lend it to you? No, they faded me. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, do you mean that you started a crap game with some sailors? Oh, no, boss, no, I didn't start it. You see, there were seven sailors standing around in a circle discussing Einstein's theory of relativity. Uh-huh Then someone dropped a pair of dice And Einstein went A-W-O-L But Rochester, you didn't have to get in the game I know, but one of the boys said shoot And even I couldn't refuse that call to battle stations <laughs> Well, there's no use talking about it anymore. How are things in St. Joe? Are the people excited about my coming? Excited? Boss, they're panicky. What? They're evacuating this town faster than Berlin. <laughs> Rochester, don't be silly. They love me in St. Joe. Why, well, I heard they've even got pictures of me all over town. Oh, they have, boss. They have. How do they look? Oh, the pictures look good, but those words, dead or alive, are definitely upsetting. <laughs> Now, Rochester, I know you're making that up. Anyway, I'll see you there next Thursday. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I was only kidding. People here are all waiting to see you. In fact, they're here from all over the country. They are? Yes, sir. From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe, wherever the four winds blow. Ah, they love me there. So long, Rochester. Goodbye. Good old Rochester. Play, Phil. Come on.
Good Canteen, played by Phil Ayers Orchestra. Phil, your band members sound especially good tonight. Is this your regular orchestra? No, this is a bunch of musicians I picked up in Chicago. Oh, oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen... I got them at the stockyards. <laughs> The stockyard? Yes, I figured if I got them out there, they'd bring their horns with them. <laughs> oh, Harris, you clever kid. Go button your cuffs and square your lid, you boy, you. You girl. Yes. Hey, Phil, you don't know how lucky you are. You know that you couldn't be on any other show but mine with that corny stuff. What are you talking about, Jackson? I'm going to be on the Fitch bandwagon tonight. The Fitch bandwagon? Yes, and they're doing their broadcast here in Glenview right from this stage, and I'm the guest star. Well, congratulations, Phil. Lots of luck, Phil. Hey, what's going on, Jack? What's all the excitement? Phil's going on the bandwagon. Oh, well, the way you congratulated him, I thought he was going on the water wagon. <laughs> Mary, stop being ridiculous. Yeah. Now, let's... <laughs> have to say, yeah, yeah. Now, let's get back to our own show. Ladies and gentlemen, since we're at a naval air station tonight, for our feature attraction, we will present... A dramatic sketch of the sea entitled, Boy, Was I Seasick, or You Can't Take It With You. <laughs> now, Mary, Mary, there are only men on this ship, so you can't be in our play. Well, I want to be in it. I can't help it. There's no part for you. Well, you let me be in it, or I'll tell all these fellas that when you were in the Navy, you saluted a barber pole because it had stripes on it. <laughs> I didn't salute, I just said hello. Well, <laughs> Remley liked that. Now, let's get back to our play. As the scene opens, I, Captain Jack McBenny, commanding officer of an aircraft carrier, am standing on the bridge of my ship, the USS Ulysses S. Sassafras. Wipe your chin. Quiet. <laughs> we are on the high seas, knifing silently through the night toward a secret a destination. Yeah. Captain McBenny? What is it, Ensign Harris? Well, we've been at sea 24 hours now, and it's time to open the sealed orders. I have them here. Here they are. Sealed orders? Good. I'll open them. Hmm. From Captain Carson. Yeah, this must be it. <laughs> yes. To Captain McBenny, commanding officer of the USS Ulysses S. Sassafras. <laughs> Somewhere in the Pacific. What does it say? It says, load supplies, move for Tokyo. Load supplies, move for Tokyo? Yeah, they sent it in code. L-S-M-F-T. <laughs> hmm, smoke signals. <laughs> well, they can depend on us, Captain. This is the best aircraft carrier in the fleet. You said it. Say, what's our longitude? 62 degrees south. Our latitude? 48 degrees. What's our altitude? Altitude? <laughs> Certainly. You know the last plane that took off? Yes. We're still tied to it. Oh. <laughs> we ought to watch those things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Captain, here we are now. <laughs> 3,000 feet over Albuquerque. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I haven't been this high since last night at the Silhouette Club. <laughs> Ensign Harris, we are now entering a blackout zone. Tell the men they mustn't show a light. Those are orders. Oi, oi, sir. That's aye, aye. Oh, oh. Now, men, we must take any chances. Turn out all the lights. Why? Can the enemy see us? No, but the audience can. Oh. How did that wave get on deck? <laughs> Carry out your orders, Harris. I want total darkness. Hey, you sailor. We're in a blackout. Put out that light. But, sir, I just lit a lucky strike. I don't care. Blackout means total darkness. Well, lucky strike means fine tobacco. What? Lucky strike means fine tobacco. What? Lucky strike means fine tobacco, sir. <laughs> Better. And if you must smoke, go below deck. No, no, Captain. He's too heavy. Don't send him below deck. Why not? He isn't heavy enough to hurt this ship. I know, but this will be the first flat top with a round bottom. <laughs> 
What are you laughing at? What a ship. The crow's nest is full of eggs. <laughs> Listen, Murph. There's no crow's nest on this ship. Well, I'll lay eight to five on the eggs. Never mind that. I'm your superior officer. Salute me. Come on, salute me. Okay. Well? Well, here I am again, 3,000 feet over Albuquerque. <laughs> Hey, Captain. Right. Isn't the captain supposed to stay with the ship? Certainly. Well, come on down, bub. Come on down. <laughs> now, man, we're faced with a very grave situation. We're on an important mission, and a lot depends on it. Aye, 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 aye sir. sir. Somewhere out there is a pack of submarines, and they're searching for us. But are we afraid? Of course not. Because our motto is... Laugh a while at a song, be your style, you spit, yeah. Don't despair, you Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute! I'm doing a sketch here. What's the idea of interrupting it? Who are you, anyway? I'm Dick Powell. Well, listen, Powell, what's the idea of breaking in on my program while I'm doing a play? Well, my program follows you on the air. We're going to broadcast from here, too. I'm on the Fitch bandwagon. I don't care if you're on the Wilmet bus. <laughs> I'm doing a broadcast here, and you've got no right but to... But gosh, Jack, we've got to rehearse our show. We came here all the way from California. Where do you think we came from, a gopher hole? <laughs> I didn't say that and brush the dirt off of your shoulders. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Testing, testing. One, wait a two, minute, three, wait a minute. Four, Who's testing. that? That's my engineer. He's testing the microphone. One, two, three, four. Me, one, me. Two, three, Figaro. Four. Me, me. Figaro. Now ah, cut that out. I'm going to finish my sketch. Where were we? Well, we were sailing through the murky waters aboard our ship. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, quiet, men. And keep a sharp lookout. I know it's hard to see in this fog, but wait a minute. What's that hulking shape looming through the mist? Is it friend or foe? Man your battle stations, I'll take a chance and yell. Hello there! Hey, you back! Oh! Why, Andy! Andy Devine, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm with the Fitch Bandwagon! Oh, for heaven's sake, look, Andy, I'll talk to you right Hi, Andy! My... Well, hello, Doug! Quiet, everybody, quiet. I'm trying to do a sketch. Now, we're on the high seas. Here, Andy, Andy, look at this. Look, we're oh, on the high seas. Say, seat. that's not bad, Tom. Stop, stop matching this. girdle. <laughs> now, we were sliding through the murky water. Hey, Andy, is that stomach really all yours? It sure is. <laughs> People think Chicago's got the biggest loop. <laughs> Be quiet, will you? One, two, shampoo, don't itch Now stop that. I'm going to finish this play if it's the last thing I do. But, Jack, Jack, you've only got ten seconds left. All right, then I'll do it fast. Okay, men, to your battle station. Anti-aircraft. There's the enemy. Fire. Oh, boy, we got 200 planes. Jack, those were pigeons. Those were pigeons. You're still over Albuquerque. Oh, God, we'll finish the sketch in St. Joe. They love me there. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, here's my good friend, F.D. Boone. At 48, sold American. Mr. Lucian H. Purdom of Springfield, Kentucky, has been an independent tobacco auctioneer for 31 years. He said, There can be no substitute for fine tobacco if you want a real enjoyable smoke. Season after season, I see Lucky Strike select the lighter, milder tobacco. That's why I've smoked Luckies for over 18 years. Independent tobacco experts like Mr. Purdom know that it takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 45, out of bed, sold American. At L.A. Speed Rigs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. 43, darling, sold to American. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI, Los Angeles. <laughs> 